Curta Trades here, and today we're going to look at all the things that change how your vehicle uses fuel and what you can do and what you can't do to change how much fuel your car consumes. And you might be looking at this if for some reason your vehicle typically goes 300 miles on a tank of gas and now it's only going 200 miles on a tank of gas. You might be thinking, well, something's wrong with my car. What can I do? Why is this happening? And that's a very valid concern because obviously with fuel prices being pretty expensive, you don't want to have to pay more than you need to. And we're going to go over some of the things that you can change to make your fuel consumption better and some things that are completely out of your control that you cannot do anything about. And the other thing I see people doing too is where they'll buy a brand new car and they'll say, hey, the, the manufacturer says I'm supposed to be getting 35 miles to the gallon. And when they test it out in the real world, they're only getting 22 miles to the gallon. What's up? and we'll look into that as well. So one of the most important things in terms of fuel consumption is wind resistance. And if your car is completely stock, that's something you don't really need to worry about. But if you start to add on things like roof bars or ditch lights, for example, those actually add to the wind resistance, the whole frontal area of the vehicle. And so when your car pushes through the air, the air particles have to move around those. And that can change how much fuel you're using because the, it will take more power, more energy. Another thing people don't think about too is some of the splash guards uh, on the bottom side of your car they really help with the aerodynamics of the vehicle and if those are missing or if they're damaged like mine is here you can see it pulled down when I was changing my fog lights out and it actually ripped a little piece of it off when it was dragged down the road and so the air gets stuck up in there and it can change the aerodynamics which again changes how much fuel it takes to push through the air if there's any things I forgot to add, let me know in the comments so other people can hear about those as well. So this is probably the most important thing that you can do for your vehicle to make sure that your mileage is the best. And it has to do with your tire pressure because if your tires are low uh, and not high enough pressure, what happens is it increases the resistance, the rolling resistance of the tire, and your vehicle has to use more energy to turn the wheel. And so if your tire is a little bit flat, a little bit lower, it takes a lot more energy to turn the wheels. Some people People say, especially on hypermiling forums, they'll say to bump it up a little bit higher than the recommended tire pressure. The only downside to doing that is that it can change the way that the tires wear and make them wear out a little bit quicker. Um, typically, you won't see that if you do like one or two psi over the recommendation. Um, so make sure they're not below the recommended level. Don't look at what the tire pressure says on the tire because that will give you the max pressure that is not what you want. Check on the inside of the door or your user manual. One more thing about tires too is not all tires are created equal. If you have a really knobby set of tires like an off-road or an all-terrain or mud tire, they're gonna take up a lot more fuel and it's not just because of the tread of them. They're typically a lot heavier than a normal all-season tire. So the type of tire that you have on your vehicle also plays a very important role in your, in your fuel consumption. And the height of the tire can make a big difference as well. If you put some big all-terrains that are oversized on your car, it changes the way the gear ratios work and your car typically isn't set up for the best fuel mileage unless it has the original size that the manufacturer made for that vehicle. So the height of the tire, the tread pattern, and the weight of the tire play a really big role in how much fuel you're going to use. So the next most important thing that you can do is not have a whole bunch of extra weight in your car. If you have a lot of extra weight in your car, it changes how much fuel you use to get up to speed when you're accelerating. This doesn't play that big of a deal if you're going on a longer trip where you're on a highway with no stops, but for stop and go traffic especially, extra weight is very detrimental because all the times you're accelerating up to speed, you're, have to, you're having to move a whole lot more weight and it, it adds up over time. So take out anything you don't need in your car. If you got those extra set of weights or those bricks laying around, just take them out. So the last and only other thing you really can do to change your fuel consumption is to change your driving habits and get that driver mod. And um, the biggest thing that you can do is try to use your brakes a lot less than you do. So if you fly up really fast to a stoplight and slam on the brakes really hard, you're going to be using a lot more fuel than if you coast down to a stop sign, for example. Or if you know that the light's gonna change soon, slow down way ahead of time so you're not flying up and using more fuel and then slamming the brakes on. Um, again, your driving habits change a lot about how much fuel you use. If you follow people a lot further away, if you give yourself a lot more distance between you and the car in front of you, you can anticipate stops earlier, you can change lanes earlier to get around them so you don't have to hit the brakes all the time. 
if you're constantly riding people's bumpers and they're changing their speeds, you're going to have to be hit, tapping the brakes a lot. So you find yourself using the brakes a lot. Um, that's typically where you can use a lot more fuel than if you don't use the brakes a lot. It's not typically about how much you use the gas pedal, it's about how little you use the brake pedal. That's a lot of uh, uh, one of the concepts that people don't really understand. It's okay to use your gas and get up to speed, but if you're constantly having to hit the brakes and losing that momentum and speed that you've already built up, that's when you're being a lot less fuel efficient. So let's look at some of the things that are out of your control that you cannot change and can't do anything about that will ruin your fuel economy. And the biggest one is the weather and your ambient temperatures around you and your altitude. Um, if you're going through snow, if you're going through slush, ice, rain, these are all things that will lower your rolling resistance and they will add more um, resistance to your vehicle when you're going through them. So those things will really hurt your mileage. Um, air temperature, it has a little bit to do with it, but mainly because of the type of fuel they're using. Typically in the winter, um, gas stations will use a different type of fuel that has, is a little bit easier to ignite at lower temperatures. And it typically has a little bit less energy in it than the summer gas does. And um, so that's a little bit of a trade-off. So typically in the winter, you'll have a little bit worse fuel economy for that reason. There are also a lot of other reasons why you might in the winter as well, because your car takes a lot longer to warm up. There's more likely to be slush or snow on the roads or rain, for example. And then the last one is altitude. And actually, um, if you're driving at a higher altitude, there's a lot less air resistance because the air is a lot thinner. And so you can use less fuel to go the same distance. Um, typically, the cars will also run a little bit leaner because they do get less air taken into the motor. And so they'll use a little bit less fuel than they usually do, and they'll have less resistance through the air. So at higher altitudes, you'll have better fuel economy generally. Um, the other thing that can really hurt your mileage is a lot of hills. Um, so obviously going up and down hills is not the best for fuel economy. You have to use a lot of fuel going up them. And especially it, more so in mountains than hills because with big mountains going down them, you typically have to use the brakes a lot. You can't just coast all the way down and make up for what you lost going up the other side. The speed that you drive can play an important role too because typically the best fuel economy happens between about 40 miles an hour and 60 miles an hour. And the higher you go, the faster you go, the more the wind resistance is pushing on your vehicle. And so you're gonna use a lot more fuel going at 70 or 80 miles an hour than you will at 60 even, or and even less at 40 miles an hour. So watch your speed if you're really worried about your fuel economy. And I think there's a few misconceptions about fuel as well in the octane rating. You only need a higher octane rating if your manual says you do. So people sometimes think that higher octane fuel will uh, give them better gas mileage and it simply isn't true. One more time for the people in the back, higher octane fuel does not give you better fuel economy. It just wastes money. It's more expensive. And the only reason you would ever need to use a higher octane fuel is if your car calls for it in the manual. And the reason behind that is because certain engines use a higher compression ratio in the motor. And if you have a more compression in the cylinders, then the fuel is more likely to ignite before the spark plugs uh, fire. And so if you do have a higher compression engine, you need to have a higher octane to stop that pre-ignition from happening and possibly damaging your motor. So look in your manual. If it calls for 87, put 87 in it. Calls for 90, 91, put 91 in it. Don't buy higher octane fuel if your car doesn't need it. It's just a waste of money. And one other thing about fuel is some vehicles are flex fuel, which means that they can run on E85 or regular gasoline. And E85 might look good because it's cheaper than gas. The only problem is that E85 has a lot less energy than gasoline. So typically if you buy a full tank of E85, you're not gonna be able to drive as far as you would on a full tank of gas. The only situation where E85 makes more sense is if it's a lot cheaper than gas and it's enough to make up for the difference in how much you'll need. The other problem too is that with E85, you're going to be filling up much more frequently as well. So you'll have to go to the gas station more often than you would on gas. So you'd have to do the calculations to see if it makes sense to do E85. Typically, it almost always makes sense um, to purchase regular old gasoline because you're gonna be uh, spending less on fuel that way. 
All right, the last thing that can affect your fuel economy, and this is something that you can do about it, is the maintenance on your vehicle. For example, if you have brakes that are dragging and getting stuck on, it is going to kill your gas mileage. If you have wheel bearings that are going bad, it can change the rolling resistance of them and cause more wear and more driveline um, losses. So um, you need to make sure that your vehicle is in good operating order. Certain things can change how efficient your vehicle is. Typically the only issues with your car that will change the fuel economy are things that have to do with the fuel consumption. So for example, spark plugs, fuel injection, um, things with the intake with your air coming into the engine as well. Um, also anything that has to do with the drive line. So like the CV axles, the drive shaft, if it's got uh, loose bolts and it's wobbling, you're gonna have a lot more losses due to friction with those sorts of things. So make sure all those are in good working order and these are a little bit harder to check for because typically they happen slowly and over time. So you're not just going to see a massive drop in your fuel economy and say, oh, it's the driveline losses. These are typically very, very slow processes that happen and they also don't take big jumps and big chunks out of your fuel economy. They happen very slowly over a long period of time. Um, that is unless you have something catastrophic or a break that just starts grabbing all of a sudden, then it can be a pretty big spike in fuel economy loss. I feel like a lot of people when they get a new car especially, they're really concerned with not getting the same advertised mileage that they do from the factory. I see this question come up a lot on forums and things like that where people will get a new car and they'll say, hey, I'm not getting the numbers that they recommend from the EPA. And the biggest thing you have to understand when they're doing those tests is that they have a very specific course that they drive on, what's considered highway and what's considered city. And everyone's city is different, and the way you drive in the city makes a big difference as well. If you're doing constant stop and go traffic, that is typically more than what they do for the city version of their test for the EPA. So you might see a really big hit and see some really low numbers compared to what the EPA gets for their tests. And the other thing to note too is that a lot of the times when they do these tests, they do them on a fully warmed up engine. And if you're driving around and you do it a lot of short trips, your engine is colder and the, the engine uses a lot more fuel to get it up to operating temp because it's more fuel efficient when it's up at operating temp. And so if you do a lot of cold trips or short trips where your engine doesn't fully warm up, your mileage is going to be way lower than what the EPA again recommends.